no cornflowers in the market. I had to go all the way to Mrs. Grant. Emil, you're packing your clothes. It's all ready, Mum. Nearly. Emil is going somewhere? Berlin. As long as he doesn't miss the train. A child in Berlin? I'd a Tishman. Only for a few days. Neustadt is a bit dull for a child. <laughs> dull? We have the ornamental flower garden, the chief equestrian statue of Duke Augustus, the regional nutcracker museum. What does Berlin have? Cars, he says. 2,753 vehicles cross Berlin every hour, Mr. Worth. We've got a car in Neustadt. Mrs. Homburg's noisy thing blocked the whole street outside church this morning. Mrs. Homburg went to church. Finish your packing, Emil. You're packing those old boxing gloves. The pony the hat. Pony the hat? A gangster? Uh, she's Emil's cousin. A girl? Pony? The featherweight? But I? My light heavyweight, <laughs> and still not changed for the train. <laughs> that jacket used to be huge on him. They grow so fast. After Berlin, who have grown into a delinquent, <laughs> or a hoodlum, or both. <laughs> Emil won't get into any trouble. And what about the child nappers, Ida Tishvin? Child nappers? The Frisco gang ship little kiddies off to Borneo for coconuts and jewels. Wasn't that the story of a film you saw, Emil? A terrible thing it was. Mrs. Worth and I went three times. <laughs> Must I wear my Sunday suit? Pony will think it's childish. He is a child. In Berlin, they slice the clothes off your back with flick knives and leave you to starve in the gutter. That was Savages of the Street, Mr. Worth. Yeah, a film with nightclub scenes, if you know what I mean. Ladies singing. Now, not what Neustadt would consider ladies. Let me do it, Mum. My mother is meeting Emil from the train in Berlin. I try to put aside a little for her every month. You know pensions now. By the time you've walked down the street, your money's half worth what it was. My sister does her best, but her husband may be losing his job. So it's good Emil can take what I've saved to Berlin. You're letting an infant travel with cash? Well, you can't trust the posts, and as for the banks... The banks! This robbery in the newspaper cleared out the vaults and escaped through the sewers. That's the city for you, young man. A festering sea of criminality. That wasn't Berlin, Mr. Worth. It was Hanover. Well, it was a Neustadt. Every police force in the nation's onto them. I don't think Chief Constable Yeske is likely to catch international bank robbers. Yeske can't tell the Kaiser from a cart horse without his spectacles. You've heard about the business with Duke Augustus' statue. What business about Duke Augustus' statue? Well, oh, haven't you heard? Someone drew whiskers on the Duke put a bucket on top and gave him a big red nose. It was the image of Chief Constable Yeska. <laughs> oh dear. Did you hear about this, Emil? We mustn't be late for the train. Well, half Neustadt has had a good laugh, but Yeska says that an attack on a symbol of authority is an attack on authority itself. Treason! He wants the culprit flogged when they find him. Flogged! And there'll be a huge fine. You have a good day, Mr. Worth. I know you haven't got a telephone, so if there's some... Dreadful disaster in Berlin. The Mill's grandmother's the phone me. I'll come straight round. My pleasure. Thank you, Mr. Worth. Well, if they murder you in Berlin, it will be your own fault. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Worth. Delinquents and hoodlums. Delinquents and hoodlums. But maybe you shouldn't be going all that way on your own. We bought the train ticket. Pony and Grandma are expecting to meet me. This is 140 marks. Everything I've managed to save this year. You're to give it to Grandma as soon as you're safe inside the flat and say, I'm sorry it's not more. Ask her to give two marks to Uncle <coughs> Robert and Auntie Martha for your share of everything while you stay. They won't accept. Can you insist? All the money's going into this envelope. Here, I can do it, Mum. The train, Mr. Tishby, your case. Oh, cornflowers. Yes. 
this about Duke Augustus's statue. Who on earth? The Councillor Train! Don't you speak to people in Berlin the way you do to me. Mind your manners, respect your elders, and all will be well. I was a bit cross you were late back from town earlier, but you bought these lovely cornflowers. We will have our own garden one day, Miss Tishby, where you can have all the corn flower, all the flowers you want. I promise. Shame we had to sell your father's clothes. Not long now, and you'd have grown into them. I should get some clothes. You still have the money. You'll give me a heart attack. Now, Grandma and Pony are meeting you at Friedrich Street Station, the stop after Zoo Station. Friedrich Street Station, Mr. Tishby, under the clock. Don't get off at the wrong station, promise me. You promise me, Mr. Tishby. Don't work too hard in your late sir, Phil. I'll have some Russian back in the expression. Can't fall that. to her. Not like other children you hear about. Woodlands. Mm. Ruffians. Mm. <laughs> Feral beasts. Mm. <laughs> Going far? I'm travelling to Berlin. Berlin. <laughs> In this city there are buildings with a hundred floors or more. They have to be fastened to the sky. Things were better in the old days. Everything knew its place. Yes, most we do. But cows had bigger heads in the old days. <sighs> oh, my station! My station too! Come, Come on, on down, you relax, goose! Relax, move! Oh. sort of people who made this country great to me or Tishby. Apple? No. Your mother would want you to eat healthy country food. Forgive me. <laughs> so, Berlin. Do you live in the city, Miss Snow? I operate in various metropolitan areas. In the city, there is no need to be poor if you have a brain. You can leave it at the bank. It's called collateral. You deposit your brain and the bank gives you, say, a thousand marks. One thousand marks? Lesser people can only live without their brain for a few days. So they have to go back to the bank. And to redeem your bank, your brain, the bank charges you 1,200 marks. They give you money for your brain. But to get it back, you have to pay the bank even more. Finance is a complicated business. <laughs> I hope you won't consider me rude, Emil Tishbeen, if I shut my eyes for a few moments. Business has been demanding recently. Excuse me. That cough. I'll pin it for now. Ow. There's a penalty proper use of that cord above your head. A heavy fine to punish you for sounding an unnecessary alarm. 
You don't want that. You're feeling a chill. Maybe you need to sleep. I don't think so, Mr. Snow. No? More apple? I'm not hungry, Mr. Snow. How fortunate a meal to be. So many people are. <laughs> what a lot of sheep there are in the countryside. One, two, three, eight, nine, ten, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. Someone drew whiskers on the dew. Whiskers? Not barking. The big red nose. You can't come in, Emilio. I had to sell the door. I couldn't wait for you to go into it. It's not for the simple authority. It's an attack on authority itself. It's an emergency, Emilio. I'll call this call. There's nothing to fear as long as you've done nothing wrong. You haven't done anything wrong. That cup has come undone again. Where is the pit? As long as... The money, Emilio. <laughs> us. I need to attract his attention. In my day, girls did not attract the attention of boys. Maybe we don't recognise him. He could have grown taller or fatter. Maybe he's gigantic. Or he's under the wrong clock. Or he got on the wrong train. Boys can be stupid. Maybe a man has grown stupider since we last saw him. Growing older makes people wiser. That is the immutable fact of nature. Emil isn't here, Grandma. <coughs> that is an immutable fact of nature. The next train isn't for two flipping hours. We need to ring Auntie Ida and tell her Emil hasn't arrived. She doesn't have a telephone. She has to go to the neighbours. And it would worry her. You're right. Imagine the shock. Auntie Ida would probably have a big old heart attack, drop dead with a phone in her hand. Pony! OK, Grandma. We'll come back for the next train. But if Emil isn't on it, he'll get a goddamn piece of my mind right on my handlebars. Your handlebars? You can't be heavier than Arthur Zickler in my class. And he's always on my handlebars. Oh, I do like do like it. <laughs> Latest market! Latest scandal! Latest crime! Police! The police? But my mother, the child is so 
something to hide. A big injustice. I will pay for his ticket. The child has already committed the offence. Unauthorised travel. Attempting to defraud the city transportation authority. It's a youth crime wave. A child's tram fare. Is that the worst fraud in the city? He's illegal. The child's a storyteller. A con artist. But plenty of children in this city don't have the price of a tram fare. He's a revolutionary! I simply remember what it was like to be a child. Here. Thank you, sir. I'll pay you back, I promise. Oh! Uh, are you in some sort of trouble? Where can I send the money? I'm Mel Kissy from Lloyd, sir. Uh, I work at the City Press. I have to go, I'm sorry. Around here, or you'd know me. I'll box you. I'll box you. I haven't got time. Because you're a yellow belly bumpkin. Did Mummy make that outfit for you? Don't talk about her. Does she know you're on your own? Is she ashamed she brung up a milk toast? Your poor mum. Oi! I've got respectable paying customers here. Clear off, or I'll have the police on you. The police? Don't know what the G-men lark in the wheat fields, but the Berlin buzzies are evil. Chuck a fella in the slammer just for walking down the road wrong. See this scar? Copper spur. I need something back home. And the cops are on to you. You've got a little yes to Mason set me. You're on the run. Ace. I'm pursuing a thief. A thief? Who did he rob? Me. You? <laughs> 140 marks. 140 marks? <laughs> you could buy anything. My mother trusted me to give it to my grandmother, but he started while I was asleep, and he hypnotised you. He gave me a slice of apple. Must have been drugged. Did you see Dr. Caboose? What a film. So where is this Dr. Caboose? There. With the... and the... He's having the dumpling. Café Juicy have the munchiest dumplings. Is he armed? I know he has a knife. Can't go to the authorities on account of this Yeska bloke. Mind you, no one would believe a kid word against a smart gent. He'd probably say I'd stolen his money. He's stolen your money, you can't go to the police, and he's armed and dangerous. This is ace. It is. It's like being at the movies. It's like being in the movies. How can I ever tell my mum? 140 marks. You could buy a motorbike. Maybe. I wonder, would you help me? Help you? Me? Help you? Oh, I understand. You don't know me. That'd be ace. It would. You could owe me so... No speeches. Gustav. But everyone calls me Toots. Emil. Did you know 15 Schumann Street? I know Schumann Street. Are you clever? I'm gonna need to be. Only thing I could do at school is boxing. When I went to school. I'm fast and I'm strong. Did you get good marks? Is your mum pleased? She should be. You box? I'd beat you, of course. Hurry up. This is a message for Pony the Hat. Take these boxing gloves to show Pony you've come from me. 15 Schumann Street. Can you remember? I can remember anything. As long as it's not maths or French. I like you, Emile. The other kids in my school, they looked at me as if I was, you know, except the professor. But his parents are communists. The professor! Yes! <laughs> what is it? Keep your arm, Mr. Sticky Fingers. But don't look such a hick. Country mouse. Are you taking your bicycle? I haven't got a bicycle. <laughs> Just a hooter. My mum can't afford to buy me one either. She says the way things are. Emil, shut up. Worry about Mr. Moustache. <laughs> Gustav. 
You don't have to be late for the opera. Remember your piano practice while we're out. Did you play an instrument, Gustav? Oh, yes. <laughs> How uh, original. We must play us a duet sometime. Cafe Juicy, five minutes. It's an adventure. An adventure? Which is number 15, fella? Who wants to know? You're a girl. Your point is? Pony the hat. <laughs> Emil wants you to. Emil, where is he? Grandma, if anything has happened to Emil. Hey, hey, hey. See these gloves? I'm down the line. Read this note. Dear Pony, this is my friend Toots. That's me, Toots. <laughs> We're chasing a... A thief! A thief? His handwriting is terrible. What else? The adults won't understand, but you will. Don't tell Grandma. Don't tell Grandma what? Lots of love. That's him, not me, the love bit. What's going on? No time to explain. Is that a boy? Let's be good on handlebars, Toots. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. <laughs> Pony! Emil, you Jenny be in five minutes in Berlin and you're already having an adventure. Emil, Pony, this is the professor on Tuesday. Anis, it's Gary Hindenburg. A mouse. You brought your mouse. Which is the perpetrator? That Joe swigging punk at Cafe Juicy. With the... Uh, and uh, Mr. Snow. He nicked the dirt. Emil's mum safe for his grandmother. 140 marks. No. no! But he'd be choking on his dumplings if he knew what he was up against. Us! Us? What? We're kids. He's a grown up. He looks like a big shot. He looks like a bank manager. He's a thief! My parents say bank managers are thieves. No <laughs> politics, sir. <laughs> He's getting up. We have to follow him. <coughs> then what?
Should be doing something healthy. Athletics in the park. Marching with a youth group. Officer, we apologise. We do. You're not from Berlin. I don't mind the country kids. It's the city ones I can't stand. Filthy cosmopolitans. Leave it, Professor. In our day, kids knew their place. Silent and still. Out, Out of the way. way. I ran all the way. Where's Mr. Snow? News updates. We've lost Mr. Snow, which means Emil has lost his money. One hundred and forty marks. Is it Mel Crane? Come on, Emil. Don't want Grandma calling noise that. Mum, I'll have to tell her the money's gone. Will that be very bad? Leave it Tuesday. But telling your mother be even worse than having the money stolen in the first place. Yes, I think it would. Then we must get the money back. Impossible! No way now. The odds are insurmountable. It's totally kaput. Emil. Emil? How many children are there in the city? Would any of them help us? Are oh, the children? We can ask. Meet back here in 20 minutes. What if your mum finds out you're missing you? My mum? You're a warrior, Ida Tishbin. He's safe. The money's safe. Everything is fine. Definitely got it now. This is good. She's 
to go to my school. And she, no, fine, but no. Open and close doors. Carry his stuff. Fresh water in his bowl, not a penny. The richer they are, the meaner they are. He's in room 61. It's fair key. But if you get caught, I'll be sacked. Look out! Room service, sir. Uh, yes. Uh, I shall go down to your restaurant and see if you have any acceptable dishes. Then no one is to disturb me until 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. I'll call the deputy, sir. I remember it from the train. And can you smell something? Like sulfur. I'll go in. Not on your own. Then I'll go too. But what? In films, this is the bit where the girl screams or hides. You two stand guard. In and out. Get the money. Quick. <laughs> what do we do if the money isn't here now? I don't want to think about that. This bottle smells of sulfur. Hair dye. Why would your Mr. Snow want hair dye? Look for an envelope. You pay with coins at Cafe Juicy. Money could still be in the envelope. And if it's not, just look everywhere. But if it's not here, after we've looked everywhere. Don't stop. That was the mm -hmm. If Mr. Snow is coming back, mm -hmm. find the money. It could be in his jacket pocket. We need to get out. Now, I told you. Hi. <laughs> What sort of a hotel restaurant doesn't serve dumplings? Answer the phone, Mr. Snow. Can you keep him talking long enough for a meal and pony to sneak out? I can try. Who is this? Hello, is this room 61 of Hotel El Dorado, Berlin? Why do you want to know? Congratulations, sir. Congratulations? Uh, you are the winner of a large cash prize. A large cash prize? Oh. Please remain on the line. Wait, box. what's this prize for? Uh, the prize is for the National Moustache Awards. The National Moustache Awards? They're new. I don't believe you. Who gave you this number? Uh, Mr. Snow. Who gave you that name? Who's behind you? What do you want from me? Uh, Never contact me again if you value your life. Then I'll stay. 
AK. You can't. She can. If Perry doesn't go home, my aunt and uncle will call the police. And Emil thinks he's already in trouble with the cops at Neustadt. You are? Pony, I've been in trouble with the cops loads of times. OK. So you boys get to camp out here all night while I have to tuck up in a rotten old bed. I don't like it at all. Pony the hat? Wow. Did anyone tell Tuesday what happened? Pass for the milk. If we can't get the money back, well, your mum punish you really badly. She worked so hard for that money. She would do anything so I don't have to wear worn out clothes to school. She makes sure I can sometimes buy sweets to share. Where we live, it's the poorest kids who get picked on. It's the same in the city. Ashamed of being poor, but not of being cruel. She isn't only money. She says I can stay out with my friends, but I come home so she doesn't have to eat dinner on her own. You think I'm what Truth called me? A mummy's boy, a milk toast. I started boxing to stop them calling me that. But those exactly the same stars you can see in Neustadt. You really love each other, you and your mum. Suppose we do. What's going to happen if I can't get back that money? You're a warrior, a milk toast boy. Sleep. If Mr. Snow hadn't stolen your money, we would never have met you. Are you in some sort of trouble? In Grits and Hoodlands. Various metropolitan areas. Liar! Have the police on you! Have the police on you! Mrs. Tishby! Ida! Mrs. Tishby! Be careful of Ida! Mrs. Wake Tishby! Up. Ida! Wake up! There's been a telephone call from Berlin. Not about a meal! Tell me it's not about a meal! Don't panic! They don't know where he is. Emil! They ran in Neustadt. I told them not to a million times, but they did. Pony? It's still dark. Not my mother. They haven't called my mother. You mustn't panic, Emile. We have a strategy. Eyes on every street. More detectives will be here at dawn. So I can go back to sleep? Ah, oh, ah! Oh. Shut up, Arnie. Seagull! Arnie spotted Mr. Snow! He's, He's trying to sneak out. You rattled him last night? Maybe this can man can help you. He paid my travel fare. Emil! You can't tackle him alone! Wait! He's dangerous! City press! Ah! Ah! What the flip are we gonna do now? <laughs> Who's that? What do you want from me? Please, I'm alone in this terrible place. Have pity! Mr. Snow? You. Who do you think was after you, Mr. Snow? Unfortunately, there are those who object to my hard work in the financial sector. Well, my mother works hard in the hairdressing sector. She earned that money you stole. In the financial sector, it's considered bad manners to call what we do stealing. In your world, isn't there a difference between right and wrong? My world? Well, what about your world, Emil Tishby? Does Chief Constable Yeshka have anything to say about right and wrong? That's different. It was a joke. I never meant I understand. To... We're not so different, you and I. It is rare indeed that I meet someone who impresses me as much as I do myself. I'm not like you. You have a mother, and I had a mother. I saw her at the station looking rather sad. Don't talk about her. <laughs> you want this envelope from me? In return, I ask... What? Come and work with me. Your...
courageous, you take risks, you're smart. It can be lonely work in the financial sector. Why would I ever do that? Let us talk about your mother. I told you! Your mother, the gambler. What? Well, not in the roulette wheel, and not in the racetrack. But you know she stakes everything. <coughs> her hopes, her dreams, her life. On a single card, on one roll of the dice. On you. Be rich, Neil Tishbeam, for your mother. The work will be hard, but often exciting. I'm good at what I do, and I will teach you. You know that this is a better offer than anything you will ever get in your dull little town. I'm not interested. Stop thinking only of yourself. Your mother, the place she has never been, the things she has never seen. She must have a dream, a great house, a magnificent garden, a ride on an aeroplane. A garden? Join me, and your mother shall have her garden. Do we have a deal? No. Just give me the envelope. What do I get in return? Nothing. That is not how business is done. Yeah! I'm sorry. I thought you were smarter than this. You're nothing but a child. Neustadt. Thank heavens this is all over. I don't reckon she suspects a thing, Emil. Suspects what? Mum, Miss Tishbeen, you shouldn't have come. They shouldn't have called you. I'm sorry, but I have to go. Is that blood? <laughs> You're going nowhere, Emil. Don't you understand the trouble you've caused? It's you who doesn't understand. What did you say? Let me go. <sighs> what has happened to you here? Let me go, let me go. You have to let me go. Emil? I'll bring to your parents to bring the card to collect you, Miss Tishbeen. I'm sure they'll like it very much. The flowers in this part of the park are very pretty. What happened to you, Emil? Before. You paid us transfer! Anyone could have done that! But they didn't! You did! I'm at work! Mr. Castle! Your copy! Your deadlines! Put a meal having his money stolen in your newspaper! On the front page! It's not big news! What is big news? Result! Crisis gossip! Mr. Snow is a thief! Eating his dumplings and humming that tune! Oh, Mr. Kashner! Your copy! Your deadline! Quiet! What was that? Dumplings. Of course. Which way? Mr. Kostner, this way. Mr. Snow, Mr. Snow, take a care where you go. Mr. Snow, every kid knows what you did. Mr. Snow, Mr. Snow. Who do you children? 
children think you are? The other detectives, Mr. Snow. tomorrow's front page. Mr. Dolphus! Who? The Hanover Bank thief? Remember how he made his daring escape through the sewers? The police had only two clues. The suspect was thought to have eaten a particular dish before every raid. Dumplings! And he would hum a distinctive tune. There are pictures of this Mr. Dolphus. He has blonde hair and no traces of a prize-winning moustache. Your hair dye! If you want a real crime to investigate, my hotel room was broken into last night. To get the money. Condemned out of their own mouths. The law protects respectable business people from, from public abuse. The law protects the rich from the poor. Criminals and communists, every one of them. That one is wanted by Yeshka of the Neustadt police. No, I don't believe that. I'm sorry, sir, I am. Ha. Emil, I'm going to tell the truth and face the consequences. That's what my mother would expect, sir. That's what you should do, too. Mr. Snow or Dolphus or whoever you are. I confess, I am guilty of the Grand Duke Augustus's incident. What incident? Did you injure the Grand Duke? Did you kill him? I grew a moustache in the statue. <laughs> <laughs> and I also gave it a red nose. I don't think that's a matter which will concern the authorities here in Berlin. I should Coco. Is drawing on a statue what they call crime where you live? That's appalling. <laughs> Anyway, I have an excellent alibi for the time of the robbery. How do you know when it happened? I have an excellent alibi whenever it happens. <laughs> Unless the child produces immediate proof of these allegations, it is your duty to escort me to safety and then disperse this I illegal demonstration with all the force at your disposal. Go on then, boy. Prove it. No? Goodbye. It's so unfair. I could weep. Here, Pony. I said I could weep. <laughs> Not I would. Your handkerchief has blood in it, Emil. Blood? Stop him! There's nothing more you can do. But if I can prove you took the money. Detectives! Detectives, we need to stand up for Emil. You lot too! All children! And those who remember what it was like to be children. Stand up for justice! Stand up for Emil! Password, Password Emil. Emil! Password Emil! Password Emil! Password Emil. Password, yeah. <laughs> the, blood, the blood on this handkerchief is when I pricked my finger. I pinned the envelope of money inside my pocket to keep them safe. That didn't work, did it? But there'll be pinholes to notice if they're mine. Oh, pinholes? That is absurd. Get your hands off me. How dare you go through my pocket? Not so nice being on the receiving end. There's a small blood stain on this envelope. That proves nothing. Pinholes! And here's the pin that made them. That is enough! What's this on my hands? Hair dye. Mr. Snow's back. How dare you! It's stuck with money. He is the Hanover Bank thief. <laughs> You know there is a reward for capturing the Hanover Bank thief. A reward? Emil, where are you going? Everything's all right now. Edith? Tell your mother she wasn't worth a garden meal, Tishby. Remember, Mr. Snow! Pony, can I go for another ride on your handlebar sometime? Maybe. Yes. Mum, Miss Tishby? Don't, Emil. They say there's a reward. A reward? Is that what all this has been about? No! All a great adventure for you. 
if you didn't give a thought to how I would feel. But no, Emil, not now. I don't. Mr. What? Have you heard that Yeska has decided to drop the Grand Duke statue affair? This young man says I should sell my story to the Berlin newspapers. It's exclusive! Child crime fighter! For Neustadt years! No assist on a photograph, so I'd better get a haircut. <laughs> I always said I always said things would work out for Emil in Berlin. Can I help give Emil's grandmother money? Can I show her account Hindenburg? Can I please not have to say no to a telephone net on this adventure? Please, please, please. Yes, Tuesday. Yes, 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 Tuesday. Go on. Tell her she's wrong. I beg your pardon. Uh, your son did things which you may not have liked. Racing around a strange city, staying up all night, risking who knows what. But he never stopped thinking of you. Emile says the reward should be shared by all the detectives. I don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> Not again, Grandma. In my day, I never had so much fun. <laughs> Grandma! Grandma! Can I go for another ride on your handlebars, Pony? Maybe. Yes. Are you writing all this down, Mr. Carsten? I'm sorry. If it's a story for children, it needs a moral. Who says it's for children? The moral should be, don't trust anyone. Don't trust some people. The moral is, don't trust a man with moustache. <laughs> Simon Isaac, you spoke. I refuse to be in a story that ends with a moral. Who says you'll be in it at all? <laughs> Mum, I am sorry, really sorry. You're safe. Shall we go home now? Would you like to play with your friends? Is that all right? Yes, Emil, off you go. Is this a happy ending, Miss Tishby? I think it is. <laughs>